This video is an introduction to the topic of antipsychotics. I will discuss some basic concepts on terminology and general pharmacology of this class of drugs. After this lecture, you will be able to first describe the meaning and history of the terms neuroleptic, neurolepsis, and atypical antipsychotic, and second, describe the main differences between first and second generation antipsychotics. I'd like to clarify some terminology first. The terms neuroleptic, typical, and atypical are commonly used in practice. It is interesting to understand their background and meaning. First, what is a neuroleptic? This is a term used to refer to first-generation antipsychotics, such as corpromazine or haloperidol, because of their ability to produce neurolepsis. The question that follows is, what is neurolepsis? Clinicians in the 50s described the syndrome, which has three main features, psychomotor slowing, emotional quieting, and affective indifference. Clinicians at the time thought this syndrome was a reliable sign of antipsychotic efficacy. But nowadays, it is clear that these effects are not required for drugs to have therapeutic action, and also that the presence of these symptoms pre predicts low, low treatment adherence. What is an atypical antipsychotic? Originally, this term was used to describe a lower risk of extrapyramidal symptoms associated with close-up in use. Researchers found that at therapeutic doses, close-up in showed a much lower risk of extrapyramidal symptoms, such as tardive dyskinesia. Later, the use of this term was brought in to include efficacy against neg negative and cognitive symptoms, lack of prolactin elevation, and efficacy in treatment-resistant patients. Currently, researchers argue that the addition of the features shown in green, here in green have hampered antipsychotic drug research and that reframing the concept of atypicality could have a key role in the advance of, of this uh, field. Let's see this table to review the concepts we just discussed. On the left, I have listed the classic and commonly used terms, on the right, the new terminology proposed by the World Psychiatric Association. Neuroleptics, as we discussed, are the drugs that fall under the category of conventional antipsychotics, or typical antipsychotics. The new terminology calls them first-generation antipsychotics. This includes, this includes drugs such as chlorpromazine, haloperidol, flufenacin, among others. The term atypical antipsychotics is the most commonly used for second-generation antipsychotics. Based on their shared pharmacological properties, these drugs are also called dopamine serotonin antagonists. Drugs that act as dopamine partial agonists fall under the third-generation antipsychotics category. Currently, the only FDA-approved drug in this group is aripiprazole. Here are some examples of first and second generation antipsychotics. As you can see, chlorpromazine is in bold letter. The reason for this is that it is the prototype for the phenothiazine class of drugs. This was the first drug used as an antipsychotic and is still in use. Other drugs in this group include loxapine, flufenacine, perfenacin, and haloperidol. First-generation antipsychotics are classified according to, the, to their chemical family, which predicts clinical profile. Their pharmacological properties will be discussed in, in detail in other videos. Clozapine was the first drug of the second-generation antipsychotics. The pharmaceutical industry worked to develop drugs with pharmacological similarities to clozapine, with the intention to replicate close-up ineffectiveness without its side effects. The, results, the result is a list that includes risperidone, paliperidone, iloperidone, quetiapine, olanzapine, ciprasidone, asenapine, and ruracidone. Currently, the only third-generation antipsychotic is aripiprazole. 
Now, let's see the differences regarding pharmacological profiles. First generation antipsychotics are D2 antagonists. They act on different regions such as mesolimbic, mesocortical, nigrostriatal and tuberinfundibular pathways. Something worth noting is that both first and second generation antipsychotics have some degree of D2 antagonism. D2 antagonism has proven to be responsible for antipsychotic efficacy. Besides D2 antagonism, first generation agents have effects on other receptors such as muscarinic, adrenergic alpha-1 and histamine-1. Blockade of these receptors is related with their side effects profile. Second generation antipsychotics also block D2 receptors, but what makes them different from first generation agents is their ability to block 5-HT2A receptors. As we saw in a previous slide, these drugs are also known as serotonin dopamine antagonists. In fact, they have higher affinity for 5-HT2A receptors than for D2 receptors.